Hello there. So after a few weeks of radio silence, I'm back. Uh, people have asked me a lot of questions, you know, mostly what's going on with me, where is the next video. And uh, even though I'm not rowing outdoor and it's a little less exciting for me, um, I thought it was important to give you a, an update of what's going on, where I am with my preparations, what I am thinking about, what are my concerns. And so here I am. Uh, before I go ahead, uh, I'd like to let you know this video will be approximately 30 minutes. So if you don't have time to watch the whole thing, uh, check the comments below. Uh, I'll try to make a guideline for you points uh, throughout the video so you can, you know, choose, go over and see what will suit you, what interests you. And you can skip what it's not or, you know, vice versa. So hopefully that will be helpful. Uh, Season uh, for rowing for me here in New York ended in November and so um, my training mostly uh, moved indoors. Uh, you know, that means it, it, it becomes a little more simpler for me uh, in the terms of not to have row uh, the whole weekend that I used to. So the time opened up a little bit, but you know, that being said, it doesn't mean that it's less stressful or uh, you know, I have more time on my hands. Another concern of mine or research uh, that I have been very interested in, and that's the weather. So I have been in touch with uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, waiting for their input. They have knowledge of all the uh, coastal waters and offshore further out. So, you know, they have uh, research and information that I could possibly use. So I have been trying to be in touch with them as well as I'm looking into services and providers that I can possibly use uh, while I'm on the water. So, uh, you know, there, there are services that can uh, monitor my position and give me update based on that position of what's going on around me, weather patterns, winds, storms. So that's, uh, you know, it's a big one and uh, it's part of what I'm looking into what service is the best, planning my schedule, whether or not, you know, it makes sense for me to row when uh, there is a storm coming in soon and or, you know, two, three days will be nice, but then will be another storm. So maybe I will push a little more because I know that the following few days I won't be able to. So it, that service itself uh, will make also a big difference for me. And I need to know, you know, and use any kind of advantage I have. So, uh, I'm looking into which which would be the most favorable one for me and trying to kind of uh, get in touch with e each of the providers, find out the details of what it is that they can give me. Uh, as I previously mentioned, um, I would like to leave somewhere from <clears throat> Manhattan. So um, in 1896, the two Norwegians, they left uh, right down here from Battery Park, which today is you know, nearly impossible to leave from security measures, tourists, and and so on. So I don't expect to be able to leave from here. You know, I can barely row around there. Uh, you know, you got the Staten Island Ferry leaving from here. So this is the ferry terminal right here. So, you know, but there are marina over here. Uh, you know, there are maybe a couple places here and, you know, possible spots here i know there are some helipads here so you know it would be really really cool if i could um, find uh and get in contact with somebody had it all you know leg legit and uh with permitted to leave from manhattan because you know it's a huge landmark and very important for me so i'm also looking into it trying to get in touch with people if anyone who is watching this video may have contacts or know somebody please let me know reach out to me you know, through my website or make a comment, uh, that would be very helpful because, you know, I, even if I won't be able to leave my boat over here, you know, overnight, I may would just row there and, you know, wave at people or something because it is really that important for me. But, you know, it, it would be much helpful if I could at, at least leave my boat there overnight because, you know, it will be full loaded. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things and preparations that I need to do. So it, it will be kind of hard for me to 
you know road there just to say you know goodbye to people but uh the plan is to leave somewhere from over here you know around the statue of liberty so that that would be really nice in addition to the location of where i am hoping to leave from it's important to mention change of my departure date based on my recent research and talk with Lawrence Walters. Originally, I was thinking in June. I'm now thinking of leaving mid to late May. Uh, furthermore, I want to show you on the map directly reason why and the distance between commonly planned departure point for ocean rowers who choose to row from west to east versus my location. And again, why this present added challenge. Firstly, see the overall outline of my plan route you can see the arcs uh, on the straight line which represent uh, presents the earth curve being spare uh, if you're a flat earth believer close your eyes cover your ears and perhaps go back to school uh, now i'll zoom in onto my departure departure location and You can see a detail of New York City, you know, Manhattan. So approximately here is where I'm planning on leaving from as I will go through New York Harbor and out on the south shore of, along south shore of Long Island. Then again, here, you can see the distance between uh, uh, the common choose point, which is St. John's over here uh, for ocean rowers versus mine, New York City right down here. So here is that 1100 miles that I'm talking about. And that's the distance between the standard departure point versus mine. I'm not showing this to, to get uh, applause, but really just to explain precisely where my road is and what am I facing. Uh, on, on uh, once I reach the end that I can testify on this section of the ocean, I'm sure I'll have enough time to evaluate this route. So another thing that I'm looking into is uh, all my electronics and devices uh, that I have, some of them times into other services. So I have to make sure everything is up and running and registered as uh, you know, as, as required. So one of them more so important are the emergency part of it. So that's why I have this thing over here. Uh, this is one of the beacons that I have on the boat. Uh, this one will be actually outside on the deck in the cradle and uh, should or will be triggered only in case of, you know, immediate emergency if I can row and I need to be rescued. Basically, there is uh, no other reason for this thing to you know go off uh yeah, the way it works it's basically as like a radio once it's triggered this ant antenna here is pulled out like so uh, there's an emergency button that i have to rip out this is the safety and once i press this uh this will start sending signal up to a satellite and uh you know i have a little video of this right over here on the, on their website how this thing actually works so uh, once you trigger it you basically uh, you know signal once the satellite receive a signal from the from the EPIR uh, it goes to rescue satellite and that that one from there you know it sends to rescue center and every boat or you know helicopter if possible uh, will come to rescue you or you know people will know about me um, it's not always as simple as it's shown on this video. It could, you know, take a, a days for them to come based on my location. So, you know, it's definitely not something that, uh, you know, is as easy as it seems to be. But that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much what, <clears throat> what uh, you know, the best case scenario is. And that's uh, what this beacon uh, particular is, you know, good for. So... I will uh, hope that, you know, I will need this one. And now but how well this actually works, you know, I hope, hope uh, we'll never find out. Um, it could take 
uh, to anybody based on my location two days two and a half days to get to me it's you know never as easy as you just saw in that little video so you know i i am hoping i will never need this but it is registered under my name i'm actually sending it uh, back to manufacture because the battery right now is not working and the test button is not working so uh you know i have to make sure this works perfectly um the fact that it's registered doesn't mean anything until it's actually working so you know that's definitely one of my concerns uh then i also have this uh, one small emergency beacon which is uh you know plb1 and this one actually goes to my floating device and it's connected right over here and i can trigger this you know if i'm on the deck or inside the cabin and or i don't know um off the boat which hopefully that will never happen because uh, I don't think this would be very helpful anyway, but it's good to have it. Um, and this should be with me most of the time. So this is really like a personal device. And it works on very similar principle as the previous one. It sends signal directly to satellite from which uh, any uh, boat and or, you know, rescue center will get a signal and information that, you know, the distress signal was sent and I need a help. So this is just another one. This this one is actually working. You see the red button when I press the test, I mean the red light. So, you know, that, that actually is working and it's good, good to go. Registered under my name also. I did that this week. So, you know, this is part of things that I have been uh, kind of focusing on making sure that, you know, is working. Uh, Another thing that I have been or, you know, I'm, I'm been looking into and I will be using is a satellite radio and a communication device, which, you know, this box, this black box, um, it's Iridium Go. Uh, I will be using for, you know, Internet and uh, any kind of uh, connection uh, via satellite with the rest of the world. So this is also very important. As you can see, it's working. Um through this, I will be able to communicate. This also have a distress signal. So, you know, there's basically every device that I have on the boat as, as a secondary feature, uh, you know, SOS button or, you know, some kind of a trigger. So, you know, this, this also can be helpful. Um, you know, I probably won't know what to trigger first, but um, this will keep me in touch with the rest of the world and... Uh, it's also one of the uh, essentials that I will have with me. Uh, it has its own number. It's also registered under my name. And uh, the service for this will be paid before I go out. So I can actually communicate. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I have to make sure that I'm covered for the four months, up to four months that I'm out there. And, uh, you know, the service will be obviously working. So this is also a crucial and important part of uh, the equipment I have. Now this yellow box, I left it as the, the last part of it because uh, this will actually track me in uh, real time and uh, anyone who is interested in having to know where I am or my position will do so, will be able to through this device because this will send signal to a service that will be also you know covered paid for and uh, it will be linked directly to my website where you can see on the map my position and where I am. So this is called YB Tracker. You know, I think it's it's great, amazing. The technology these days is awesome. And, you know, the emergency button again here, the red one is in case of, you know, emergencies, this also sends out the distress signal. So, you know, as you can see, all of them has uh the ability to send uh, some kind of distress signal out uh, i also need to get service for this and paid for and register this uh before i go it doesn't make sense to do this now but this will keep me uh connected with you know rest of you guys and uh, you'll be able to see where i am so this is also very good the weather service will also have a address and uh you know exact uh, code or password for the tracker so they basically can track this you know without me 
uh, trying, they will have link to the account that's linked to this device and through that they will be able to track me and based on that they will send me the weather report so this is uh, for my position uh, actually this was broken i had to send it to england and this connector over here wasn't working so uh they they had to fix it and ship it back to me now it's all uh, functional and working so i'm very happy about that and uh you know that's something that i already did and or take you know to i took care of this oh uh, another thing uh you know going down the equipment that i have to or i'm looking over um i think this would be pretty much you know for the electronics another thing i'm looking into and is important for me are batteries i want to make sure that uh the batteries that i have and or will have are you know fully functioning and will last me the whole trip without any issues or problems um recently i was told by the boat maker that it's a good practice and people do it regularly they uh replace the batteries once used um you know the ones that i have obviously they were already used once before uh they seem to be working fine the capacity i contacted manufacturer of the batteries as well and he did confirm the batteries are good but you know i i should have them tested anyway and i will still uh having said that i am thinking about getting new ones as recommended because i shouldn't be taking any chance they are not cheap uh, each battery cost of 400 dollars there is also option for me to get lithium batteries which are lighter so i've been looking into that those are even more expensive um i think pieces like 750 dollars but they are also 50 percent lighter than the uh regular batteries which uh is 63 pounds versus 30 pounds it would make a big difference for me rowing in general but it's again 1500 dollars. so you know i'm still not sure how i decide also the charging uh, device or mechanism, the system would have to be altered a little bit, uh, customized it to the lithium battery. So, um, you know, but if I have to do it, I will. And I'm looking into it. Uh, I have been lucky that, uh, you know, the specialist that I've been working with is very knowledgeable and, you know, they are helping me to find the correct uh, equipment that I need for, for these batteries if I want to make it work. So um it's just a part of uh what i'm looking into right now also very important uh making sure and going over um every hardware that i have on the boat i'm um, not missing anything i have enough rope sea anchor drogues uh which is basically a cone that i will tie into the rope and uh, throw in the water uh when you know that should prevent me from being pull out too fast by current or storm wind it should stabilize the boat a little bit so you know i never used it but uh i got the theory down so you know i am making sure i got those i have the sea anchor you know i bought a couple people have big problems with that on the on the sea they get ripped off uh, broken and uh, people lose them so you know i i will do my best not to but uh you know i'm making sure i got it uh you know rigging hardware and uh you know stuff like this very important for me and uh you know i'm constantly making lists um i have this journal over here that uh you know basically i'm i'm from beginning uh starting my my whole journey i kind of uh you know i have a history and i'm writing and i wrote you know basically from a day one when i decided to do this i kind of try to capture you know every moment uh but not as as a journal only but also preparations you know as you can see the tabs over here i have here what i need to research learn you know i have some advice here what parts do i need you know i have already written down a few things here um uh, what i need to bring with me as you can see i have a very long list of things that i have to bring down here uh i even have stuff that i need to post you know on social media i find important you know including this video uh that i would like to share with you 
um, and and some other stuff. You know, work that I need to work. Uh, you know, on the boat itself, I have a couple things I still have to uh, mount in and uh, and adjust. So you know, that's why I'm keeping very tightless. I'm I'm trying to be very methodical about it and not to miss anything. So this serves me well. Um, so that that is a uh, you know hardware and uh, essentials on a boat uh, you know very important part of uh, my preparations. Also talking about uh, hardware, uh, you know part of the things, part of the things that you know is essential to me is uh, food. So you know I'm, I have to make sure I got enough. Uh, I will be basically making packs and ration for every day uh, amount of food you know i'll be burning five to six thousand calories every day so i have to make sure that i'll replenish as much as possible i i'm still expecting to lose you know 20 30 pounds of weight so you know um, the food is one of the most crucial things obviously just for me to to work and fuel this this body engine that i will be burning every day so uh, you know, that being said, I want to also make sure that the food will be a little interesting. Uh, you know, it would be very miserable time for me if I have three, four, you know, kinds of dry food and, um, uh, and then I will, you know, get sick of it and, uh, you know, I won't enjoy eating or, you know, that just would be miserable when I, and I need it. So I would have to eat it anyway. And so I'll try to make it interesting, you know, pick the right food, have it a little more colorful. It just, just an interesting palette, things to choose from, including the, you know, hard calorie or heavy calorie f food, like uh, peanut butter or um, some chocolate bars. Um, you know, I, I'm looking into healthy ways to feed myself, not just, you know, pure sugars, but Hopefully I'll find some alternative. So I, I you know, but uh, when it comes to high calorie uh, and compact room, I think I'm a little limited. So um, still looking into it, you know, what's the best source of uh, carbs and or proteins just to feed the body. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's part of the research and I don't want to underestimate it. And I'm putting a lot of, uh, detail and energy to choose the right food uh, for, for the journey uh, another thing i'm looking into is uh, clothing and um, you know my personal gear or or body uh, gear as uh, you know i've been speaking to my pre predecessors you know bryce and and lawrence uh actually lawrence was very helpful you know he gave me kind of a breakdown what it is that they used with them when they were rowing um you know what kind of trousers uh, british you know folks usually uh use company called musto from england um you know i think they are great they have or make stuff spe specifically for sailing and you know ocean um uh, bryce had uh, gear from Arcterix, you know, that's, I think it's a Canadian company. So I've been looking into both and uh, just want to share with you a little bit, uh, you know, what it is that I'm actually looking into specifically. So uh, this over here is the jacket from Arcterix. I actually contact each of the companies individually, uh, Musto and Arcterix, uh, told them exactly what I'm about to do. Uh, what kind of environment I will be exposed to and what is it that I'm looking for. So Arcterix uh, basically told me that this jacket was their, you know, top line and would suit me the best for the environment. So um, I'm looking into it, you know, it's, uh, it's a really good jacket, you know, fully waterproof and, uh, you know, it's their top of the line uh, jacket, even though it's not specifically for sailing on or ocean, uh, I think it would uh, work great for me. And Bryce loved the company, so that, that means a lot. And, uh, you know, as you can see, it's, you know, again, not the cheapest, but definitely worth it. Uh, still cheaper, you know, than uh, their competitor in England, Musto, which, you know, that jacket comes to. And this would be their equivalent, this uh, ocean uh, ocean jacket from you know HPX which is like their most heavy duty kind uh, you know thousand and fifty dollars which is quite a bit but this company uh, they have tons of other gear other jackets as this you know smock 
which also was very good and uh, you know Lawrence told me that they did use this one and so you know again great great gear and worth for me to try uh, as you can see you know they have different types MPX should be the lighter version of these jackets but same waterproofing uh, these Musto jackets they are mostly shells or they are shells so they are not really insulated for the cold which Arc'teryx X and uh, that would have me think more about that jacket because it gave, kind of give me the overall uh, warmth as well as the waterproofing and it would be both in one but in the same time you know it's not made for offshore these jackets are great they have a lot of pockets and you know they really have been thought through for the the ocean environment uh, you know including the pants uh, again they have the HPX the heavy-duty version and the MPX uh, so you know these are some of the ones that uh, Lawrence recommend me and they were using with them uh, so these pants definitely would be option for me and they all look great you know as you can see again you know $845 for pants it's not cheap and so you know uh, these look maybe a little better but you know it's it's not a it's not a situation that I can just you know get two of them for 1700 and call it a day and you know be ready in case something happens so again it's not my case I did order multiple uh, jackets right now double check I'm you know I'm able able to return which you know that's good uh, and I will but I do want to try all these jackets including this Arc'teryx one and to really side by side compare and uh, row with them on my rowing machine at home to really kind of evaluate what uh, feels the best what I think you know will serve me the best and uh, you know this is just another thing that I'm doing so you know I'm not taking it lightly it's valid and very important concern for me to make sure that the gear and uh, you know and any essential that comes with it will be picked very carefully and so uh, you know I just spent a chunk of money just to test these jackets and then once I decide I'll send the, the rest back uh, and hopefully that part of my preparation and our gear well you know check and purchase will be done and i can move on on to other things you know i'm kind of looking forward to spring uh to prepare the boat itself bring it back on the water and kind of get comfortable again and make sure that uh you know that that's uh, up to my standards and everything is uh, good to go there is a few things that i have to still you know kind of figure out but uh you know that i will uh talk about once i get to it but uh anyway this is pretty much all to to the gear uh as of you know i'm still looking at some under you know garments as a t-shirt you know underwear and uh you know other stuff socks you know i should have waterproof socks shoes deck shoes uh you know something that dries quickly you know stuff like that so it, it's a part of it and as you can see it's a broad spectrum of things that I have to uh, kind of uh, think about and uh, figure out for myself now where, where do I gather my information so um, I guess the first person or you know my first questions would all, always be uh, to Bryce Carlson I mean I bought my boat from him and he has been from a day one very helpful and uh, you know I find his input invaluable he crossed the Atlantic from in, from Canada and he can give me the best input and he always did so uh, he's been invaluable resource and then Lawrence Walters recently uh, who did row from New York with them as I mentioned uh, previously he also been great resource uh, gave me good uh, information about the weather patterns what to look for and also with the gear um, other information that you know I need uh, I would go online you know I just do my own research Google things um, the boat maker Rano, Rano Adventure 
manufacturer they would respond to my questions related directly to the boat itself so they've been also helpful that way and uh, Bryce was you know kind enough uh, the first time I met him he actually gave me a bunch of books to read uh, six six seven books so I've been reading them as I go and uh, sometimes I found even things that I didn't think of myself so that has been also very helpful and uh, that's pretty much it. I feel very confident in the answers I'm finding and responses I'm getting. Um, I feel like my curiosity has been exhausted that way. And, um, and uh, you know, it has been very helpful overall. So I'm lucky that I have, you know, a couple good people I can ask questions from. They are experienced and, and uh, they have been very helpful. Uh, what are my thoughts, you know, about all this or, you know, where my head is, what am, what am I thinking of? Um, well, you know, it hasn't been even uh, one year since I uh, discovered uh, about ocean rowing or this that this sport actually exists. So it's um, quite remarkable that I'm this far with preparing and basically by the time I'll be leaving was, uh, you know, it won't be even a year since I met Charlie Pitcher here in New York, who was basically the first contact and physical uh, confirmation or affirmation about ocean rowing itself. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm determined. I'm focused. I'm very disciplined. Um, and... And it feels great. Um, you know, I'm very happy about what I'm doing. You know, it's I wish uh, everybody had that kind of feeling once in their life that uh, when they uh, decided to do something, they embrace, then they passion. You know, I have been adventurers, adventurer my whole life since the day I was born, I think. And uh, we all live in routines. And, uh, you know, I, I just found my passion. And this is, you know, it's not a work. I'm not getting paid doing this. You know, it's uh, it's my little thing. It's you know, it's just getting out, um, kind of realizing my own self, uh, getting out of my comfort zone, and really uh, fulfilling my dreams. You know, childhood dreams. It feels great. So, uh, you know, being in this process right now feels very good. Uh, you know, I'm just getting step by step closer to my goal by gathering all this information and doing the research. It brings up my confidence. I have been training. Uh, I'm very disciplined about it. I train almost every day, uh, rowing on, on the machine at home. I have been on decent diet. I have not drunk any alcohol since September last year just because it kind of helps me to keep uh, that focus on and not only physically but you know mostly mentally it, uh, it's almost a kind of mental mindset and preparations that uh, helps me with the focus you know I'm, I've never been a uh, you know, big drinker but uh, I, you know I do enjoy beer I'm from Czech Republic at the end so yeah, but uh, it's it's worth for me to kind of keep it off, keep my body clean, and uh, you know it, it. I feel great, so you know I don't want to underestimate it anything, and just the preparation I take very seriously, and uh, you know I would never allow myself to compromise it in any way. And if I'm going to fail or not, which I'm not going to fail, but I'm just saying, if I was or anything went wrong. I want to know that I did the maximum I possibly could in terms of preparation and research and everything that, you know, I won't regret anything that happens. The outcomes will be what it will be, but I want to do my best and this is just a part of it. So, so that's, you know, my, uh, my mindset is right now excitement and concerns. Uh, you know, there are things that I'm worried about, but I can't really tell. So, you know, I'm apprehensive about the weather, you know, the physical strains, the pains, uh, you know, the solitude, 
um, the ocean itself, I mean, you know, which it's, it's very serious. Of course, the more I know about it, the more I realize how crazy it is to do so. So I'm aware of all that, you know, I'm not some kind of a dreamer or, you know, just a crazy guy, which maybe in a way I am, but uh, I'm fully aware of what I'm getting into. And so, uh, you know, these concerns are there, but there is no reason for me to talk about it right now. Uh, you know, maybe when I get closer, uh, you know, I will be uh, talking about it in real time, recording from the boat. But uh, right now, it's just step-by-step -step planning and preparing. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the spring. Can't wait to get my boat out on the water again and uh, just keep training and getting towards uh, departure. And then it's all in uh, in the stars. But uh, But that's it. So what can you expect from me in the near future? So um, I'm working on a very short, quick video about my daily routine, training, and just like to share with you, uh, you know, in general, uh, what I'm working on indoors right now, show you a little bit of, you know, part of my gear and equipment and just my, my routine working out preparation and training so you know that that should be quick and then um, there's another video that i've been thinking for a little while and uh, that's just related to my cause uh you know i still have to think it through a little bit um i i do know what message i'd like to spread and it's gonna be environmental related um, just in general i love nature so you know um my focus or the message i would like to send primarily is just to you know respect it and make a little more you know give people a little more awareness and hopefully to make them more aware if possible you know just to kind of uh, not to not to have this journey or you know adventure to be only about myself and the crossing and the sport so to speak but to, to give a d deeper meaning because there is a meaning and you know it would not be possible for me to do this without ocean. It would not be possible if, you know, pollution was everywhere and, uh, you know, the, the planet is being threatened from many angles these days more than ever, or it seems. So um, I think it's important for us to, to think about these things. And if I can help and or make any of you guys aware uh, then I will. So I'm still thinking that through and I will come back uh, with some message in next next video. And one last thing before I go, uh, I would like to ask you, please share with me your thoughts, uh, questions, concerns, if you have any information that may be helpful and or, you know, you'd like to share with me, please do so. You can comment, you know, below this video or send me directly email. My email address is on my profile as well. I have a website, you know, go there. You'll find some information in addition to what you just heard there. Uh, <clears throat> I will try to upload a brief breakdown into my blog on my website as well. I have Facebook, I have Instagram. Please follow me. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, tell your friends and, uh, you know, get engaged with me. Let me know what would you like me to share with you next time. What would you like me to upload? What are you interested in? You know, I'll be very happy to do so. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Um, and now I have to kind of edit it. And uh, you guys have a good night. Thank you.